Thank you. We bless you. We adore you. Lord, even as we have sung this song, we see your face. We know that even as we see your face through the mirror of your word, that we would be changed in the name of Jesus into that image from glory to glory Amen. by the Spirit of the Lord. As we continue to behold your face through your word, we know that our change comes Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for we know that you've answered the petition that we have raised up to you this morning. Lord, even as this meditation goes forth, we ask, Father, that you would quicken this word Amen. and you cause it to come alive. Amen. Hide me, O God, behind the cross. Amen. That as I speak, O oh Lord, it will be nothing but Christ crucified. Amen. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll just take this song briefly in Philippians.
chapter 3, that I may know him and the power of resurrection. I, I heard that version here um, for the first time. Uh, this particular um, way that I know it, I, I know to sing it. But this is a new way we sang it here, I think, but Jerry raised it. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That I may know the Lord, oh, that I may know Him, that I may know Him, Lord, that I may know Him, the power and the power. few weeks we've been looking at the nature of man as he was created in the day 
that he was created. I will just read Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Man is created in the image of God, the image and the likeness of God. And we saw how, the, that, how man lost that connection with God, man, which we, we know as the fall. And man lost that vital relationship with God. And that vital life that connected man to God was lost. And man died. That means he was severed from fellowship with God. And there was a corruption that entered into man's being and into the world at large. That is responsible for all the things that we see which we are very familiar with. And of course eventually led to death. And we all saw the nature of this new, we call, call the new, this new life that man had, walking in rebellion to God. And we see Jesus Christ coming to terminate it by dying on the cross. And we've on, we now understood what the scripture means when it tells us to mortify uh, the members on the earth because we are dead. Because the old man is dead and there's a new man. But I would not end this meditation without making mention of the final provision, which is called the resurrection. Today, we will draw the curtain on this meditation. We'll end it today. I didn't want to end it without talking about the resurrection. Jesus is no longer on the cross. Amen. The tomb is empty. Hallelujah. And it was announced clearly by the angel when Mary went to check the body. He said, he's not here, he's risen. Hallelujah. And he, of course, we know he's seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Amen. And there's, it's a promise to us. It is a provision for us, too, the resurrection. So we are not meant to die forever and on the cross forever and ever and ever. There is a resurrection. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That is our hope. It's the hope that burns within our hearts. Hallelujah. And then of course the resurrection comes first, comes by being planted in the likeness of his death. Death first, and we will be raised to a life incorruptible. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I'll just make some little additions and move over quick, quickly to the meditation for today and um, end. Now beyond seeing and mortifying the sinful desires, the believer, through the cross, is required to reject the world and anything that comes between him and his Savior. We have dealt with the issue of mortifying the members out on the earth, the works of the flesh, the desires of the sinful nature, which the scripture calls flesh. In, in, it, it, in some um, context, it's called flesh, and we've seen that in some other context, flesh is the old man. So you have to know in what context it's talking about. But there is a new man in charge, but the old man that died left certain settings. And because we are dead, that old man is dead. The new man in charge is required to destroy those settings. That's why you are called to mortify. To the, uh, the help of the Holy Ghost that is in you. But now we are taking it, we are expanding it. The cross also requires 
that you reject the world. We see Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. If we read from verse 10, we would see, we have a clearer picture. But some people were trying, as, as they had always done, to compel the Gentiles to be circumcised. And Paul was saying they are doing these things so that they can boast in their ability to convince Gentiles to be circumcised. Because for that was a sign of the covenant for the Jews. It was circumcision. But Paul said, I'm not interested in boasting in these things, but in the cross of Christ, of whom by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. The world and everything that the world has to offer through the cross is crucified to me and I to the world. The laws of the world, the fascination of the world is crucified to us and us to it. Our we to it. When I go downtown, where you have those... The, those big buildings and I, I just look around and I see the the glories of of the world the financial institution and all those big buildings with lights or you go to I go to the mall as I was went to Uncle Tree yesterday and seeing everything there and so many things were just running through my mind which one which the jacket with the fitting and when I have one which one will fit and how you know <laughs> which one you'll pick so many things you see but we should be able to give up material things for Christ's sake not because they are intrinsically valueless or it is morally incongruent with the Christian virtues that you aspire to be. So, sorry, sir. For the sake of, for the sake of children, uh, you need to break it down so that they two kids can understand it. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm about to, to do. Okay, sir. Intrinsically incongruent. Well, okay. To, uh, <laughs> To aspire, okay, that's what I'm about to do now. To aspire to be, let's say, the CEO of a bank or something, something big, is in itself not incompatible with, <laughs> is not in disagreement with Christian virtues. That means to want to be successful, to want to be the best, is not wrong in itself it's not wrong in itself but when it comes side by side with a demand from God that you should be able to release it yes. I remember um, when we were younger a bit younger in Sunday um, I think it was youth meeting and somebody asked a question to the auntie that was coordinating said why did God ask for a drink offering is it that God likes wants to also drink alcohol <laughs> she said I know you want to drink that while you're asking that question <laughs> then she went on to see that it represents strong habits that ordinarily you don't want to give up but then I didn't understand it until later much later that God is requesting that those have those things that ordinarily you want to hold on to. They might not be bad. That you should release it as an offering to Him. Hallelujah. The cross enables and requires that we reject the world and its fancies. Paul said all the things I've acquired. He began to list all the things he acquired. He said, 
I gather all this and I count it as rubbish for the excellency of the glory. Amen. And when a demand is made on an individual, he can release those things that charm you, those fancies, those things that you, that the connection, the appeal to material things is severed. Amen. Not because those things are, are bad. But you are, you are not attached to it. You can easily give it up if, if need be. It is part of of living the crucified life, especially when the Lord makes a demand on it. And we'll see in Luke, okay, Luke chapter 9, 23, Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily, not once a year, not twice a month, daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Daily, when a person picks up his cross, or when a person is carrying his cross, it is a sign of death. Nobody picks his cross and goes back alive. Once a person is carrying his, when Jesus was carrying his cross, he had not died, he was carrying his cross. People were already crying because they knew the implication of that. Once a person is condemned and the person is carrying his cross, if you had a business transaction with that person, reckon it dead. Forget about it. If that person had made a proposal to someone or had accepted a marriage proposal, you know automatically that that business is over. Because nobody carries his cross and returns alive. And Jesus is making that demand. If any man will come after me, he should carry his cross daily and follow me. It's a life of daily Crucifixion. In the name of Jesus. Both crucifying the desires, the sinful desires of the flesh, and even the worldly appeal, the things that the Lord would require you to give up, or that you on your own would give up for His house, for His glory. And without that, that person cannot be His disciple. In Luke chapter 14, verse 1 to 35, it's a long chapter, but I will encourage us to read it later. Luke 14, 1 to 35. My emphasis is in verse 26 and 33. Jesus said, whoever will come after me and will not hate father, mother, brother, sister, wife, cannot. That's what he said. He cannot be my disciple. He cannot. And he put it in a broad context. If we read from chapter 1 to the end, we'll see the broader context in which that came up. A man threw a, a party, a lot of the feast, and told his servants, go and bring people. And those that they invited gave excuses. I have bought this, I have married a wife, I have so many things. And the, the servant came back, said, this is the report. The, 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 the master said, okay, go and bring People go and go to the street, just bring people. People came in, the servant said, but people are here, but there is still space. He said, go and bring more people. Then he turned to the disciples and said, whoever comes to me and will not reject father, mother, brother, sisters, husband, wife, cannot be my disciple. And he said, there is no one who would embark on the project whether you want to build a house or you want to go to war, I will not count the cost. There's a cost for following Christ. And when the appeal comes, as we have as we hear every day, we are to make an evaluation. Because everything that comes by God's word has implications. It, it doesn't just provide free information, just flowing. I, always, I like to ask myself, what is the logical outworking of this thing? What is, the, what is the requirement? So it's not just about coming to... You can come. But to be his disciple, he said, count the cost and know what you're about to commit yourself to. You cannot be my disciple. The cost of being a disciple should always... What Jesus was saying, he didn't say 
despise your parents. Of course, we know that he, that would be contradicting the commandment. Part of the commandment is honor your father and mother. He said it meant that the cost of being a disciple should always come first, even if it means we, have, we need to make a clear separation from ourselves. We have to do it. To love Jesus so much that you are willing to put before him, that you are, that you are willing to put him before everything is what it means to hate father, mother, and even yourself. When advice or what advice, opinions come from people that you love, which contradicts God's word, you are willing, because of Christ, you are willing to, to severe, you are willing to, re, this, re, you are willing not to take that advice, even if, if need be, to part ways with people that used to be your friend. But this new way of life has brought in a contradiction. Hallelujah. You should be able to let that go. If you cannot let that go, if an individual cannot let that go, it cannot be a disciple. In in um, First Kings 19, when Elijah met Elisha, plowing, he cast his coat on Elisha, and Elisha knew the implication. He didn't say anything. Elijah didn't say anything. Elisha came after him and said, "Please let me go and greet my parents." Elijah said, "What did I do? What did I do to you?" And he continued walking. Elisha went quickly, killed the animal, settled the account of the people, and followed Elijah to be his servant. So if an individual must be ready to leave valuable things, it is part of dying daily. And of course, to hate ourselves is not talking about low self-esteem. You're not saying you should have low self-esteem. Human reasoning, he's talking about human reasonings and those things that we see in ourselves that contradict God's word. We must be ready to reject them and bring them under the blood, bring them under the cross for, for, for crucifying. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're now going to the main thing Ephesians 1, sorry, Ephesians, sorry, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 22. Cultivating the new man. That he put off concerning the former conversation, the lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The new man is created in the image of God, created after God in true righteousness and in righteousness and true holiness. In Colossians. I think it's in Colossians, I can't remember this. We are told that the new man, the new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of his creator. King James says after the image of him that created it. The new man grows, the new man learns to become fully grown and clothed in the exact image of his creator. It's God who created that new man. And that new man is in his image, or the new man grows and he grows by learning the word of God. The new man is created in God's image, as we saw in Genesis 1.26. So our minds have to be exposed daily to the Holy Ghost as we engage him through his word. In James chapter 1 verse 21. James 1, 21 to 25. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and re receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth, forgetteth what manner of man he is. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continue, continueth therein, 
he be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed hallelujah Amen. now through the holy the, the the holy ghost through the word the holy spirit acts as a mirror and as we look through that mirror we see ourselves we see our shortcomings and we see what we can become in christ the image of god and as we interact with the word of god in prayers in fellowship by studying the word and and living that the crucified life the lord begins to point things to us habits and things begin to come up that should be dealt with but we see this through the image through the mirror of God's word. And Brother James is, say, is simply saying, it is those who do, who act. And of course, obedience is, 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 is part and parcel of this. As the word of God shows us ourselves, and we see what we, what we ought to be in Christ. We see the person of Christ. But of course, it is through the word of God. The word of God is the mirror we make adjustments but a person who hears the word and goes without taking any action is likened to a person who has who looks in the mirror and forget forgets how he looks so but a person who continue who looks into the perfect law of liberty and he and engages by doing he says in verse 25 That man shall be blessed. I just want to read it quickly in Amplified. So get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness with a humble spirit. Receive the word of God, which is implanted, actually rooted in your heart, which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts. Obedience comes in. And not merely listeners who hear the word, but fail to internalize its meaning deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth for if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it he is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in a mirror for once as he looked at himself and gone away he immediately forgets what he looked like but he who looks carefully into the perfect law the law of liberty, of course, the law of liberty, the law that frees us from the law of sin and death, and faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. Hallelujah. He will be blessed and Amen. favored by Amen. God Amen. in what he does Amen. in his life of obedience. This is the way we cultivate the, the, the new man. We look at ourselves through the image of God's word and obey. That is how the new man is cultivated. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7 to 18. But if the ministration of death, written and engraving in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away? How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the, the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Amen. For when, for, sorry, for even that which was made glorious had no glory in disrespect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such great hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ. For even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. 
Nevertheless, when he shall turn to the Lord, oh, yes. the veil shall be taken away. In the name of Jesus. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we are with open face, beholding us in a glass. What we compare that with what we just read in, in James. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We'll take notes of verse, let's start reading from verse 7. We'll take note of verse Verse 8, I'm looking for where we, we first encounter that word spirit. Now, how, how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? Because why I'm, I want to refer to that is because Paul was saying that the Lord is that spirit. He was talking about, I think I, I, I have lost it here. Anyway, I will, do, I will just go on. I took note of it, but, I, but when you're reading it, it's talking about the, the spirit of, of course, the spirit of the new covenant, which ex, ex, excelleth beyond the old covenant, sir. Verse 3. Yeah, the Lord is that spirit. He was referring to... Uh, Verse 17 is when he said the Lord is that spirit. Yes. Are you looking at the first spirit? Yeah. Verse? Mm -hmm. Verse 6. Verse 6. Okay. six. Who also had made us able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraving in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? Okay. Okay, we'll just go on. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'll see you. Now, he said, the Spirit, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of that Spirit, making reference to the first Spirit he, which we have just read in verse 3, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberation. 18, but we all, we all with, op, with open face, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Sometimes the, ex the experience of an encounter fades with time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many people have gone to meetings, church conferences, church meetings, Sunday service, and they announce a, a, a change of name. That their lives will never be the same. Yes. Just one year after, you are begging that same person to attend the next conference. <laughs> because there seem to always be a fading experience after an encounter. Why doesn't encounter why won't why won't encounters last? <laughs> but our concern this morning is how to maintain that life. Hallelujah. The things that we have heard. So when there are challenges, that life, and given also the principles that we see in the word of God, we engage those challenges continually. That is how that experience remains fresh. That encounter here was a fading glory. It was a glory that, that, would, that would fade. And of course, the children of Israel couldn't even look at Moses' face, and he had to cover his face every time. Now, Paul is relating that encounter in Sinai to the present, he was relating the present state of the, of the people. That even when they read Moses, they veil figuratively of the, the physical veil that Moses had on his face, is the darkness of the heart. That they cannot see that this glory that was revealed was actually a fading glory. They can't see Christ. They are still darkened, looking at the Lord, looking at that experience that they had in Sinai. 
which in actual sense cannot compare to the glory of the risen Christ. He said it, can, it, it can't compare. It's, it, it's in comparison, it is not even glory. But now I'm, I'm relating to our experience. When there's an encounter and a person experiences a fade after some time, we have been dealing with how to, to take care of the issues of the, of, of the fallen man. How shall this experience be permanent? How can this experience stay? Day in, day out, a person is fresh. How can this experience not be a fading experience? The challenge that we meet and that we would meet should not discourage us and, allow, and make us fade, but rather it should provoke the instruments that we have. And one instrument from our meditation is so, so thus far is understanding that the old man has been settled yeah. at Calvary. Hallelujah. Amen. That understanding oh, and also the other principles that we see in the word of God, the victory of Christ at Calvary, the power of the blood, the provisions of the blood, that we are to mortify the desires of the flesh because we are dead, that we are crucified with Christ. He said, I'm crucified with Christ and I live, but not I, but Christ, that the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God. I'm crucified with Christ, but I live and the life is actually the life of Christ in me. That we have to deny ourselves. And the instructions that come to us, even in the private place and in the in corporate gatherings, as long as we take hold of these instructions, we are looking, it is looking at is looking into the mirror of God's word. And the scripture says that we are changed from glory to glory. Amen. Amplified puts it this way. And we, we, we are with unveiled face. Mirroring that with the children of Israel, there was a veil over their hearts. Mm. And he said when that heart turns to the Lord, when there's a conversion to the Lord, that veil is taken away. We are with unveiled face, premising that this Premising on the fact that these people he's now addressing right now, the veil has been taken away. Yes. We all with unveiled Amen. face, Amen. continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image. What we read in Genesis 1.26, from one degree of glory to even more glory that comes from the Lord. Who is the Spirit? The Lord is the Spirit that brings about that change. God gave the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. When Moses was about to die, he charged Joshua to take heed to the law. Joshua 1 8. God tells Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You have to meditate on it. That is the only way you can have good success. In Deuteronomy, before the children of Israel entered the promised land and before Moses died, he reviewed the law again with them and told them this is the only way you can be successful in the new land. The point I'm giving, making here is that nothing new was added. Nothing has changed. In Nehemiah 8, after the children of Israel returned from the Babylonian captivity, Ezra, they had to read the law. It's the same thing. Second Kings, we know of when Josiah ascended, the book of the law was found and it was read to the people and it sparked a national revival. The point is, everything that is available for an individual for his soul to come forth in the fullness of Christ has been made available. There is nothing new that is, that is going to be added. Whether it is the appropriating the blood, praying to God the Father through Jesus in his name, it will not be a different way of calling the name of Jesus. It's not a different way. But the fleshly desires have a way of turning to beggarly elements to help deliver us. 
by God's grace, we will reject every beggarly and weakly element that we think can add and hold on to the head, which is Christ. Hold on to his word. This is all that has been given. It did not change as we have gone through this. It's still that law. In Deuteronomy, when Moses said, I think God told Moses, when the, when the children of Israel have a king, he is to make a copy of the law for himself. Check it with the Levites to be sure it is correct. And he is to keep it by his side, by his right hand side, every day. That was all that was what all kings were supposed to do. To rule God's people by the law. By the law of God. And it is the word of God that is that image. And as, we, as the word of God is a mirror. And as we look into his word, we are progressively changed into the image that we see in that mirror. Which is Christ. In ever increasing glory. Until Jesus Christ is formed in us. If an individual fails, the man that will succeed will not use anything new. He will still grab this same key and do exploits for God that same, in that same spot where that individual fell. The people that will do exploits for God is not anything new. It is this still, is still the same key that we've been talking about. Tempt, Satan tempted Eve, Adam, Jesus, and he still tempts us to, today. Jesus defeated Satan by the word, and we are to do the same. Still the same principles. We should not turn to beggarly elements to help us, but continually looking on to Jesus. We, with unveiled face, should behold his provisions and keep beholding it every day. Don't bother of how you will keep being a Christian and you will keep standing for the next 20 years. That is not your concern. Today, behold his face. Tomorrow, behold it. The, the, behold the day after. Don't be projecting the next the next 30 years, what will happen? Would I disappoint God? Keep beholding. Amen. Keep beholding. Amen. Keep beholding his image. The image of Jesus as we see in scriptures. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost, through the operation, through his, the operation of his power, brings about his change in us. Into that same image that we see in the glass. And it is as we obey. Every day. As Peter kept looking unto Jesus, he was walking on water. For if by any means a person looks away from Jesus and begins to sink, if you cry, Master, save me, he will save you. Yeah. And you can continue looking unto him. And we are progressively changed from one degree of glory to another until we come forth in his image, in his complete image, and in his likeness. There is an old hymn, Nothing Between. Some of the, the stanzas read, Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Nothing of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my Savior, that so that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure. Habits of life. Though harmless may seem. Must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There's nothing between. Nothing between. Even many hard trials. Though the whole world against me convene. Watching with prayer and much self-denial, triumph at last with nothing between. Nothing between like pride or station, mm -hmm. self yes. or friends shall not intervene. Yes. Though it may cost me much tribulation, I am resolved there's nothing between. 
this journey called liking our Christian experience to a race, to a journey, it is not without an end. It has an end. And to those that overcome, it terminates in eternal life. That man will finally come forth in the complete image of Jesus. And the charge given to him in Genesis 1.26 will be fulfilled. Have dominion over the earth. He was meant to be God's designate, God's representative on earth. I don't kid myself regarding the consequences of the fall. It was real. It was not metaphorical. When you go on the street, you see it everywhere. I know it's, oh yes, I'm born again authority. But a, 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 an old woman is walking her Rottweiler. You have enough sense to wait somewhere. <laughs> because you know you will not go and test it. It was real. It's not, it's not, that, that is the experience that we, are, that, 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 that we live with. Do you think Adam was scared of lions and bears? There was a, there was a glory that cover it. The fall is a real phenomenon. It's not, it's not something that is mystical and just talking big terms. You see it every day. But by the time the image of God grows and grows and grows and, cr the, and Christ, the revealed world is finally revealed in his full person. What we just read in Genesis 1.26, have dominion. I'm have dominion, subdue the earth. Have dominion over everything that flies, that creeps, that moves. Yeah. Complete dominion is restored. Hallelujah. When we read Revelations 2 and 3, we see the promises to the overcomer. That even what Adam did not have opportunity to interact with, the tree of life, said to him that overcometh, he will give to eat of the tree of life. That right? is in the midst of the garden of God. But all this is us. We look into the perfect law of liberty and we engage to his word. By the help of the Holy Ghost, we are transformed into that very image Hallelujah. by the spirit of the law the lord help us to run this race with patience that we will be able to that there will be nothing that we cannot let go for our master the woman with the alabaster box very expensive perfume she broke everything at his feet and I, you, I know, you know how precious a woman's hair is to her. You used her hair to wipe his feet. Hallelujah. And the Lord Jesus did not say, oh, this is strict. He, he accepted it. There is no sacrifice that is too big. He accepts all. Anyone that is to come is required to release all and follow him whithersoever he goeth. Those are those that will come to the fullness of life. We'll just take that song again that I may know him and we'll just pray and end. That
Happy suffering Be made comfort Into His image As I did to your Lord That I may know you That I may begin to respond to the Lord man was created to reveal God's likeness and God will not rest until he reproduces his likeness in us he said I will not rest and to give sleep to your eyes so until your righteousness goes forth as a lamb that born it he was created to exercise God's authority on God's behalf he was to be God's designate on the earth you were destined to be a ruler. But we became a slave. Fell from the position of slavery. And Jesus came to fulfill what was terminated. The Father sent Jesus to fulfill the purpose frustrated by Adam through his fall and to show for the likeness of God, to exercise God's authority. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in us, we shall quicken our mortal bodies. Yes, we have borne the image of the earthy, but we will bear the image of the heavenly. For the second Adam, the Lord Jesus, was made alive given spirit he came to terminate Adamic legacy and all the effects of the fall he came to give new life and by the men who have partnered with the Holy Ghost in obedience looking at the world it is these people in turn, according to Romans, that will take the curse from the face of creation that grows, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Let's pray the prayer of Ephesians 1 18. That they the eyes of understanding be enlightened. That we will see the riches of his glory. What God has, has placed in store for us, we would see it. And we would know that it works more than any earthly pursuit. For if you do not see it, what. There will be no incentive to give up the luxury that the Lord has blessed you with on earth. That our eyes be enlightened, that we would understand, we would see that it will be an obsession. Amen. Oh, Father.
We can ask the Lord to stay in us hunger. But as the deer pants for the water, as our soul will pant for God. That the only thing that will satisfy us is when we are waking. His likeness. That the only thing is to know him. Paul said, I determine not to know anything amongst you save Jesus and him crucified. That even as our master gave up great things, he said, who had been in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He did not think it, it something that he should grasp so much. He was willing to lay it aside and take on a lower nature, human nature. There is nothing that would ever be required to sacrifice for him that can compare to what he did. But as we are told in Matthew 19 or so, that there is no one who has left father, mother, brother that shall not be rewarded a hundredfold. There is a reward. I don't know. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the word that has come from. We ask, oh God, that you open our eyes to see the provisions. Because everything that is necessary has been provided. And there is nothing new that you would do. The next time you appear is for full salvation. We ask that you open our eyes to see the exceeding power of your glory to see the riches of your glory to see that which you have prepared for us that we might be able to lay on to hold on to your provisions and deal with all these things that beset us these natures that beset us that we might be able to to make sacrifices, to love not our lives unto death, to lay our lives on the altar, to go all the way with you. We thank you because you have already said it as we interact with your word, we are progressively changed into the very image. Father, we ask for hunger, thirst for more of you, for more of you. Open our eyes, O God, to see those things that are really important. That we might not turn to the beggarly elements to help us out. But would hold on to the head, which is Christ Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ from the dead. In all the challenges of life, we will not say who will go to the death, that is to raise him from the dead. But as your word has said that the word is very near, yes. even unto our mouth, yes. the word of faith that we speak. Therefore, your word says that with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Even so, O oh God, open the eyes of our understanding. In the name of Jesus. And lighten our eyes this morning. For your word says that by the Spirit of God, we will know the things that are freely given. We will not be crying out for things that the Lord has said to us. Son, daughter, it is freely given. We will know it. We will know the truth. And this truth shall set us free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Apprehend us by your spirit. Let the spirit come afresh upon us and let it bring fire upon our bones. Oh yes, let the spirit of God quicken us and give haste to our feet and give readiness to our heart that we may flee to the mountain. For there is time no longer that we may lay hold of eternal life, that we may know Christ and the power of his resurrection, that we may know that we might be made conformable unto your death. That we might break it through this mortal body and attain the resurrection out of the dead to break forth from the dead ones. Lord, we bless you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. Yes. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto all that believe. It is the power of God unto salvation. This world is the power of God unto deliverance. It is the power of God to break free from addiction. It is the power of God to keep us afloat. It is the power of God to fullness of salvation. Therefore, by the spirit of faith, we believe, therefore we speak, we proclaim it of our heavens, that we will walk in the light of our new creation man. That we will walk in the light of our new creation man. That we will not turn to that we will not turn to beggar the elements. That we will walk in the light of our new creation, man. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For even by one man's offense, death reigned from Adam unto Moses. Even so, by the free gift, by the free gift, by the free gift, by the free gift, life has reigned unto eternal life. We lay hold of the free gift. We lay hold of the free gift. We thank you for the obedience of Jesus. We thank you for the obedience of Jesus. We lay hold of the free gift that we receive life. That we receive life. For you said as many as have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we shall reign in life by one man. Father Lord, we 